<laughs> Welcome everyone to episode 459 of the Swallow. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. The most muscular swole cast, broadcast, podcast, live cast, and beer cast in the realm. Because when I flex, you flex. We all flex. Ah, biceps. You love it. I love it. We all love it. Today, we are going to light this joint on fire. It is shoulder joint day. Yesterday, we went to the girdle. Was talking about both. Didn't have time. Too many nukes. Not enough people with the radiation suits. So I felt bad, decided to parcel it. So now we went girdle, now we're going joint, and we are going to crush. So just in review, actually before we get started, welcome to everyone that's new watching the show live. This is every day at 12 noon Eastern time right here on Facebook. You can watch every episode on YouTube. You can listen to all the podcasts on SoundCloud and iTunes. Check them out all over the place. And stay tuned, everyone, for some big announcements as well as the shoulder workshop this Thursday at 8 p.m. in Premium. So very excited to bring a lot of fucking content to Premium on Thursday. That's going to be a nice workshop. Looking forward to it. Huge. Today, 4.59. Let's talk about the joint a little bit. Yesterday, we talked about the girdle. Now, what are the differences between both of these things? Uh, just to recap... What we talked about the other day, you have the girdle and you have the joint. The joint pretty much acts on the arm, the humerus, and the girdle acts on the scapula, okay? So the shoulder blade and the arm. So you have the girdle, which we talked about yesterday. We talked about the traps. We talked about the rhomboids. A little bit dabbling on the serratus anterior. Talked about, um, you know, all the muscles that pull on the shoulder blade that will create stability and mobility, allow the arms to move up and down. We'll talk more about the inter, uh, or the, how should I say, the the interaction or the integration tomorrow. I just wanna separate these things um, left and right here. So we had the girdle yesterday. Today, let's talk about the joint. Let's talk about all the muscles that attach onto the humerus. Let's talk about all the muscles that attach onto the actual arm. Onto the actual arm. You have things like the rotator cuff, most people will say they hurt their rotator cuff. Most people will talk about the rotator cuff, but very few people actually know what the fuck the rotator cuff is. People just run their mouths and say, oh yeah, I hurt my rotator cuff, I hurt this, but you don't even know what it is. So if you hurt this, shouldn't you know everything about it? Shouldn't you really know what to do to prevent it? Shouldn't this be a primary focus of your training? It should be, but more often than not, you ignore it, you don't pay attention to it, you don't train it, you don't uh, give any second thought to the rotator cuff, which is one of the most important areas in the body because it's one of the most frequently injured areas of the body. The rotator cuff, and let's just really just talk about this today, a couple other muscles that are important that attach onto uh, the humerus that are part of the shoulder joint is let's say the long hair, the triceps, you can argue that the biceps is a part of that. You can talk about the latissimus, the lats, and the pec major, you know, the chest and the back. But for our intents and purposes, we're going to focus on the rotator cuff because this is the most important part of the shoulder joint that we can discuss because this is what people don't train. This is what you are not paying attention to. This is what you hurt when you hurt your shoulder. When you have pain in this area, these are the muscles that get injured. And what's interesting about pain, what's interesting about injury is that when you get an injury, when you get a rotator cuff tear, you oftentimes don't feel it here in your shoulder. You think it's something else because you feel it in the side of your arm. You feel it in your forearm. You feel it like underneath your, uh, by your ribs. You feel it in all different places, but you don't feel it where the actual muscle is. It's called a pain referral. So where you feel pain isn't always where the pain is coming from. And I want to repeat that because this translates to all the compensation uh, that you're going to have from, let's say, you pulled your, you, you sprained your ankle and you have back pain, or you sprained your, or you hurt your hip and you have neck pain. You're going to have movement patterns 
and issues and improper movement that's going to relate to pain and injuries in other areas of the body because it's all connected. But just because you have an injury in one spot doesn't mean you're going to feel the pain in that spot. And that's where uh, things get a little bit twisted because you'll feel pain somewhere and then you'll work on that area or get a massage in that area. But the problem isn't coming from that area. It's not being sourced from that area, which is interesting, which is very interesting. And that has to do with nerve pathways and you know, the perception of the injury and what your body guards and blocks against in order to keep on moving and surviving. So your body is all about survival, but where you feel the pain, where you perceive the pain to be isn't always where the damage is. And that's very important. So the rotator cuff, you have four muscles, four muscles of the rotator cuff. Okay. And okay. Those, and this is how you can, um, remember, the names of the rotator cuff muscles. It's gonna get a little edu educational, but you can just use this. So you have the, um, let's talk about, let's do supraspinatus. Let's do that first. Interesting, ooh, big words. Uh, infraspinatus, ooh. Terra's mind, ba -ba -da. and the subscapularis. So this one, these two really, these two are really the most, the, the ones that you are going to be able to target, you know, these are the ones that you're going to be training most and concerned with. Many people, the reason why I circled these two, it doesn't mean that these aren't important. It just means that when there's injuries, these are very common. Uh, and I'm going to explain why and you're going to understand why because of overhead movements because of where the muscles go I can't draw I'm not going to draw the whole scapula now I mean this is kind of stuff that we can go into more detail you can google and you can look at like the pictures that's just even better to do it that way but the supraspinatus is on top so you have these four muscles that go from the shoulder blade to the head of the humerus now what I will draw over here is you have what I drew yesterday from the back, you have the shoulder blade, but then you have really rudimentary, you have the arm. I'm not even gonna draw an elbow, just gonna draw a fist, right? So you have the shoulder blade and the head of the humerus. Now, the job of these muscles, what you have to mostly understand about the rotator cuff is that the rotator cuff muscles, their job is to keep the head of the humerus, this round part of the arm bone, close to this little cup here this little cup shape, the glenoid fossa of the scapula, okay? That's the job. These four muscles, their job is to keep this close to this and keep it like nice and tight, a cuff. It's just like, it's not a rotator cup, it's a cuff. And they come at it from different angles. You have one that come here, right? You have one that comes on the top. You have one that's like a little bit lower and you have one I have to draw a dotted, and that's not really the scale, but it's like, it comes from the front. This is the back end we're looking. So it's on the top, the side, the front, and it grabs the head and it keeps it close. It keeps it close. And it keeps it close to the scapula, so when the scapula rotates, the arm can go higher and lower. We talked about that in the last couple episodes. If you need to review, go watch the last couple episodes of The Daily Swole, and it's going to explain a little bit more why. So now when the rotator or when the um, scapula rotates, it goes up and down, then it kind of points the arm. It like it aims the head of the humerus because I explained like the first day we did this, you have limited range of motion. If you don't move your shoulder blade, you can't move your arm that much. But then if you let your scapula swing all the way up and go all the way forward, you get all that additional range of motion. That's so your body can spread the mobility and the stability over two joints and allow for more stability and mobility over the entire area rather than give one muscle all the mobility and risk more injury or all the stability and not have any mobility. So these two things work together. The scapula works with this joint here. So you have muscles that do different things, but they work together. So the job of these four muscles is to keep the, the shoulder, the head of the uh, humerus in place. Okay. But they also rotate. Oh, who would have guessed it? Who would have guessed it? Now the names of muscles 
are all sorts of things. The names of the muscle could have to do with the nerve, the location of the body, could have to do with the shape of the muscle, could have to do with how many heads of the muscle there are, could have to do with the action, could have to do with the insertion. So you have all these different things like a minor, small, supra, above. So the names of the muscle does give anatomical detail onto what describes the muscle, like the rhomboids, that's the shape. You know, trapezius, that's the shape of the muscle. Pectoralis major, it's in the pectoral region and it's major, it's a larger muscle. So you have biceps brachii, it's in the brachial region of the body, biceps, two heads. So you have the names that relate to it. So don't worry so much about the Latin, don't worry so much about the name. Uh, think about what the purpose of these muscles are. So you have muscles that rotate and pivot the arm. So let me use this for example. Okay, just gonna have this, this is like, you know, what I used to erase the board, right? So if this is the arm and the rotator cuff muscles are coming at it from here, right? And they're just grabbing on, okay? What they do is they turn the arm, okay? One of them on the top can kind of contract and lift the arm. A couple other one can turn them in. A couple of them can turn them this way, right? So they rotate the arm and a couple of them kind of lift it up to the side. So you have the infraspinate, supraspinaeus that lifts it up, infraspinaeus that does external rotation, and then you have subscapularis that's internal rotation. So they just pivot it, they pivot it. Now they don't provide a lot of strength. They don't provide a lot of strength, they provide a lot of stability. They need endurance, they're type one muscle fibers. They need, they, they don't provide a ton of force but they provide a lot of stability. They need to be mobile, they need to be flexible, they need to be malleable, they need to have some give, they need to have you know, the ability to stretch so they don't get hurt, so they don't get torn, you know, tear your rotator cuff. Uh, but they also need endurance, so they keep these two bones close together. What muscles give strength for the shoulder joint? What muscles give strength? The bigger ones, the deltoid that's gonna cover, the deltoid, the, the, the medial head of the deltoid, the anterior deltoid. I'm just covering up the rotator cuff and the posterior deltoid on the side. So now when I do this, the reason why I'm doing this, now it's starting to look more like a shoulder that you're familiar with, right? Then it's a shoulder, right? Then it's, it's a shoulder. Actually kind of looks like my shoulder, right? So the muscles that provide force, tons of strength are other muscles of the shoulder joint like the deltoid. The deltoid, the pectoralis major, the latissimus dorsi, those are the muscles that are gonna provide force. The rotator cuff is also part of that joint because they're all part of the joint because they touch this bone. They attach and they act on this arm bone, the humerus. The difference is the rotator cuff muscles are designed to stabilize and keep the proximity of the scapula and the humerus and the deltoid, those larger muscles, the superficial ones that you can see on top are the ones that are going to be lifting the heavy weight, pushing the heavy weight, doing all the power, you know, the heavy, the heavy load, the heavy lifting, no pun intended. Those are all the type two fibers, a lot more type two concentration, a lot more high force production, lower endurance, but then you have these rotator cuff muscles that need to provide that stability, that mobility to allow for these types of activities, but maintain the integrity and maintain the joint in proper position. When these muscles aren't trained properly, when you're not doing higher repetition, when you're not doing more isometric, when you're not doing proper lengthening mobility, these things can get brittle. These rotator cuff muscles can get brittle because they're deep, they're inside. They can get brittle, they can get stiff, they can get damaged, and they can rip, they can tear, they can even rip completely off the bone where an orthopedist would have to literally take the muscle and drill it back into the head of the humerus, and you have to keep your arm in sling, blah, 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 and you know let it repair. So, when you hurt yourself, it's not your deltoid, it's not your shoulder, it's usually these muscles that are deep inside that aren't getting the mobility, you're not doing yoga, you're not doing mobility, you're not doing flexibility training, you're not doing activation of these, extra, of these muscles, you're not doing specific corrective exercises that are turning these on, that are keeping the, the juice flowing, that are making sure that these are working properly. So it becomes a question of, not really like, you know, when you're gonna get hurt, if you're gonna get hurt, but why would you? Why would you not work these muscles? If you're into bodybuilding, if you're into aesthetics, if you're into how you look, if you're into how, you know, the shape of the body that you want, if you're into training hard and you're into getting results and, you know, working your ass off, 
why wouldn't you not, why would you not focus a lot of your energy on training and making sure that these muscles are on point? And we get so caught up with, okay, what's your split? Chest on Monday, back on Tuesday, and then legs, and then arms. Why not extend your cycle like a day longer and do one for like corrective exercise and rotator cuff and do this to warm up every day or do more yoga or do more corrective exercise at home. These are things you could do at home. You could do them every day. You could do them before your training to warm up to activate these muscles. It's just like the glutes. Activating muscles before you start your training. Activate the rotator cuff. Make sure it's turned on. Make sure they're ready when you do your bench pressing, when you do your pull-ups. These are things that start to swell. These are things that start to hurt and tear and get inflamed. And there's a little, there isn't much area underneath, deep inside, under the bones. So when you injure these muscles, there's inflammation, there's less space, they rub more. So then there's more inflammation because they're getting rubbed. Then there's more inflammation because they're getting irritated and there's less space and they hit more. So what happens is you start getting a little pain like, oh, my shoulder kind of hurts a little bit. Ow. But then all of a sudden it starts hurting to the point that it's like aching and aching to the point where you can't lift your arm because the irritation and the inflammation decreases the size of the ability of the space that the muscles can move. Then they rub more and they inflame more and your body eventually just shuts everything down. So I want you to do one thing before um, we leave here today. Here's an impingement test, standard impingement test to see if you're getting any kind of irritation from the supraspinatus. I want you to take one hand, so you can do this right now, take one hand, put it on your opposite arm. You know, don't go here, you know, don't bend your arm, just grab your opposite shoulder. And then I want you to lift your elbow up in front of your face as far as you can. Okay, I'm a little sore, so it kind of aches a little bit, but do this all the way up. Okay, and you can do it with both arms. If you're feeling pain, if you go here and go, ow, it hurts, that's an impingement. That means your, infra, your supraspinatus is likely rubbing underneath um, the bones that it travels through in the, in, in the shoulder joint, in the shoulder girdle, actually. So all the way up, take your hand, go here, all the way up and all the way down. So that's one test to see if you have any pain, if you have any irritation. Um, just like a home test, orthopedist will do that. Of course, if you if you go to you know, an orthopedist, they're gonna take your arm and they're gonna push and resist me and go here, put your arm out, they're gonna like twist and see where you have pain because they can, they know manual muscle testing, they can put your arm in certain positions, add resistance and say, okay, it's probably this. They're still going to have you do an MRI and all that. But that's a great way so you can see whether or not you have any kind of stiffness or irritation or impingement. Okay? So thank you so much for watching episode 459. Tomorrow, even more details, even more integrative concepts. And remember, this is all leading up until the shoulder workshop Thursday night where I'm going to be going over specific exercises, specific strategies of training the rotator cuff, of strengthening the rotator cuff, of integrating mobility with strength training with the shoulder. So I'm still amped, super amped for Thursday at 8 p.m. If you wanna sign up for premium so you get access to all the previous workshops and be there live this Thursday night for the shoulder workshop. The link is in the description, premium.soulnormous.com. Everyone else, I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow for episode 460. We're gonna get into this even more. I'm gonna put this all together and show you how the scapula rotates and how it you know, moves the arm and allows for all these movements and blah, blah, blah to take place. So make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you share this broadcast if you haven't. Tag some people, float some hearts. I saw some comments. Now they're kind of popping up a little bit. I think everyone was kind of zoned out watching. So make sure you float some comments. Make sure you comment below. I still wanna know if you have shoulder uh, road takeoff injuries, if you had any problems, I wanna know what they are. Let's get into some conversation below in the comments and make sure you hit the share button and uh, tag a bunch of people so we can blow this shit up this week. I'm Amped, peace, McGee's, deuce, McGoose. I'll see all of you tomorrow, same time, same place, 460. I will see all of you on Instagram today. Make sure you follow me, IG, at Solnormous. Peace, out, work those delts, work that rotator cuff, don't slack. Later.